EMS at sea level from my house to yours. I am with Greg Papandrew. Greg is with uh, PCB Buying Expert. Um, Greg, we talked a little bit before uh, about the supply chain, and I'm hearing from the EMS side of things that in some areas the supply chain is easing. What are you seeing in the in the PCB industry? Yes, I, I do see it easing as well. Um, basically, what's happening is uh, we're seeing um, what was a, you know, freight. We ha- well, we had raw material prices going up like crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, and now what we're seeing is right now is uh, we're seeing a slowdown in manufacturing demand. In other words, the, the houses over there, especially offshore, are hungrier. Domestic mm-hmm. is still going strong, but offshore is getting hungrier for business. With that being said, even though there hasn't been a official statement about um, material prices going down, the fact is, is that, you know, you can negotiate because of that capacity. They do have capacity that they're waiting on. And in fact, uh, I just uh, shipped a very large order, uh, surprisingly two weeks earlier than expected. And that's because they were able to push it through their shop. Another thing that's a big thing that's easing, I see, and also whether it's, yes, flights have picked up, uh, but not as much to bring back freight back to normal, but I've seen freight lead times have decreased mm. by almost about 50%. So as far as, uh, you know, the supply chain for PCBs, um, and that is going well. Um, domestically, um, a lot of the domestic shops that I've dealt with and all, they're busy. And the EMS mm-hmm. companies right now are busy. Everyone seems to be busy on the EMS side here. Yep. Uh, even And it's not so much the point of getting components because uh, some of the customers that I deal with who are both EMS and I, I actually do program management with their OEM partners, um, they have the components. It's just getting them on the line. So mm. right now there's a lot of people who are busy. And yeah. they're not, they're made just wrong. They're not, you know, they're not pushing it well enough. But um, yeah, I see uh, there's still room, uh, still capacity left in the circuit board industry. Uh, but I haven't really felt anyone that's complaining about business per se. No, no, nor have I. And that's really interesting, isn't it? When we have all this talk about inflation and recession, and it's the, it's, the strangest mixture of economic indicators we've seen for a long ter- time. Uh, and everybody keeps saying to me, yeah, but it's inflation. And I I keep coming back to that. Is it demand-led inflation or is it supply chain-led inflation? In which case, if it's supply chain-led inflation, um, increasing interest rates and that kind of action from the feds it isn't really going to... Um, make a big difference. I don't know what your take on that is. What are you, what you're seeing specifically in PCBs? It sounds like you're seeing the opposite to inflation right now. Correct. That's what I am seeing uh, on that quite a bit. Um, I still think that um, I, I mean, customers are still, you know, you know, it's kind of funny. It's like, I am more competitive than my peers. I know where the pricing has to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been in the industry long enough, you know, and people know who I am. I'll still walk into a customer. And, you know, I used to say say that either a PCB buyer today is either, you know, untrained, overwhelmed, or just, you know, not incentivized enough to move business. Hmm. And that could be on a management side where it's, you know, but everything's going, for, but when I started talking to buyers and I'm saying, look, you know, you know, I'm Greg, you're, we're quoting you on our new business opportunities. I said, yeah, but I could save you money on what's on your floor. Yeah, Greg, we don't have time to look at that. And so yeah. you have these buyers that are, it's not that they're untrained or they're lazy or non They just don't have the time. They're overwhelmed. Yeah. So they're answering quotes. So buyers today are mostly just part of the, the sales process of putting quotes together. Yeah. And, you know, and I'll get POs either at the end of the day or the beginning of the day, not during the day. Yeah. Because, you know, it's like, so they're just overwhelmed. So when I look at them, it's like, oh, you know, there's, there's, there's found money on the floor. I can increase your profit margin without, without even getting a new customer. You yeah. know, there's found money. Based on Greg, that job's fine. I don't want to touch it. Everyone's happy, but I got these other 
5 million quotes I got to do and get out the yeah. door then we may get 10% of them, you know, yeah. maybe, you know, yeah. so that's yeah, it's that classic, classic situation, isn't it? Where the supply chain has been shaken up. So all those buyers are involved in firefighting and fixing all those problems. Um, and it doesn't get, doesn't give them time to deal with the important stuff, which is the, uh, you know, improving what is on the floor. And um, one of my colleagues always says to me, it's the, it's the prioritization of the urgent over the important. Um, and that, and that happens, that happens so often. One of the big pieces of news coming out of the US in the last week or so was the, was the CHIPS Act um, and people reading into that and seeing what's in there. Is there anything in there for the PCB industry? Is the PCB industry going through that same ideal of having more onshore supply chain, more secure, more robust supply chain, maybe a bit of decoupling and less dependence from China? Yes, uh, the CHIPS Act will help with that, but also IPC has been pushing, rightfully so, the support, the Prince Circuit Board Industry Act of HR that was just put in recently. And, you know, they hope that goes through this year. Um, there's some saying it will, some saying it won't. I think, you know, yes, you know, I'm a broker, call me the B word, and I do a lot with offshore, but I'm very much in favor of, you know, increasing from not from a, a jobs, but more for national security interest to build boards here. Uh, we also have a we have a capacity issue and we also have a technology issue. And even when I was trying to get boards built here when the pandemic hit, and I do both automotive and I do microelectronics, and it was very hard to uh, get that business sourced here. Hmm. One, there was a capacity issue. They would say, Greg, um, we can't compete against China. We can't do these quantities. I'm saying, what do you mean? Well, th these quantities, well, they actually refused to even bid those quantities, even though I said, look, wow. you know, this is the customer knows they're going to be paying more. Please bid it. Well, Greg, I have to have another shift on this. Okay, so bid it as if you had another shift. You know, this is the kind of job that runs all night long, keeps your equipment. I wouldn't get that. Then I have another where, you know, it's microelectronics. It's a two-layer board, a very thin board. Also a four-layer board, very thin board. No, they just, they, you know, it was balked at because now, Greg, we can't do this. And we're not really talking high technology. We're just talking a thin material. And I said, okay, well, tell me what you would need to build this. Okay, I would go mm. back to the customer. So I was trying to work things out. No, 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 no. Yeah. So, you know, I, it was so it was a both standpoints. And so I, I, you know, part of that is, you know, incentivizing not only, um, you know, the rebate for the boards themselves, but also monies for R&D, for expansion of, uh, of certain board houses. And, you know, uh, in one of the articles I read the other day says, you know, the U.S. is only about 4% of the industry. Um, okay, uh, what's the expectation? And will they mm. all that to 10, 15? What does it look like? I don't know. Um, you know, I do think any way we can do to incentivize our industry is great. At the same time, I don't want really to punishing our industry, industry at the same time mm. where, you know, basically is this is that I tried to source business at several companies. I have to go offshore for those boards. And if I'm doing that, I'm sure there's other customers that are doing that well, because I'm not privy to everything. Mm. You know, all the boards are out there. So, you know, I, my customers, I'm sure others are getting penalized, punished with a tariff on product they couldn't get here, even if they wanted to get here. Yeah. So, it, you know, so that's where I have a problem with the tariff. Um, I, But I don't have a problem if you want to do rebates, incentivize, and, you know, like, the, but that's fine. But, you know, it, yeah. You know, and that's that's my. I'm wondering, the Chips Act or the HR, how much will it really affect the outcome? Yeah. And yeah. no one, and this is, and no one has said, you know, this is what the industry should look like in five. This is the plan. Yeah, yeah. This is the vision. This you know, is the vision. and I, you know, is it jobs? Is it profit margins? Number of board house? Is it technology? And, you know, no okay. one has said so this one. Do you think, I mean, obviously, 
part of the problem with tariffs and rebates is they're fairly blunt instruments and they don't necessarily get to the where where you want them to get to. Um, when you look at it from a semiconductor point of view, they've put quite a lot of um, quite a lot around the idea of investing in infrastructure, and they're aware that it takes years to build up semiconductor infrastructure. Um, and it also takes years to get those plants up to the latest technology. So there are different investments there. So let's let's make Greg president for the day um, <laughs> just for fun and say, you know, hey, what what would you do? And what do you think is what do you think are, are the goals and what what what's achievable? Well, I mean, uh of course, anything that's national security, mill, arrow, some medical. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we could, we could do that here, but that doesn't make up uh, it just, but that alone does not make up the, the bulk of the industry. So mm -hmm. you got to say, okay, what can we do to incentivize more private investment? If the board houses, EMS companies are so busy now and they're, Especially the board, I could talk more effectively of board houses there. They're more, hmm. I mean, the profit in a board house compared to the profit, of, you know, an EMS company, you go back and forth, but board houses do pretty well right now. Yeah. Okay, what can we do to incentivize private investment? Is it, uh, you know, is it, you know, given a tax holiday on investment? What can we do so we can say, look, because right now, it, you're being tariffed, taxed, whatever, and it goes to the government and the government doles it out to what they feel is best. Mm. You know, there's application of that. There's, yeah. there, there's a lot of paperwork. There's more stuff to go. Well, what if we just short circuit and say, look, if it's, if you're going to start a board house, if you're going to invest this money in there, then there's going to be a tax holiday because we want to encourage people to put that money in there. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, you know, the prices, you know, uh, you know, board houses right now, there's a lot of them in the market. I, I, they're, they're making some good money. I seen the sales I'm privy to some of the conversations in the background of some of the stuff and, and what they're asking for uh, EBITDA and everything else and how many times. And, you know, there's money being made, so they are making money. So yeah. why we don't have more private investors? So that's where I would think uh, if I was, was, how can we do that where we can get private money being put into it without yeah. going to the government. Yeah, because and that money's got to come in and invest in <laughs> additional capacity in Greenfield site, not just M&A activity. You know, we've seen we've seen M&A activity, but we haven't, I'm not aware of large Greenfield sites or large new uh, PCB facilities or high-end, high-technology PCB facilities being... I mean, I'm, I'm even talking... Opened. I mean, I don't mean to interrupt, but I'm even talking to one of my OEMs where they're actually looking like, okay, they're becoming very vertically integrated. They're saying, hey, Greg, what do you think about us having a line and uh, get a small line involved so we don't have to wait in line to do our 100, 200 pieces, but we'll mm -hmm. let the US company do, you know, their, the 100,000 pieces a month of that stuff. You know, yeah. I, I think that's a great way to have a hybrid model. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, so they're looking at greenfield as well. Um, you know, uh, but what I what I think is amazing is you've got companies that are that are moving forward, and the ones that are not waiting on the government are the ones that are going forward. So how can we encourage people? Because whenever it seems like it's a private entity, it will move faster than the government. Mm. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and, that's you know, cool. and that's and, and to me, uh, if those are being innovative, um, those comes are innovative will will thrive even in yeah. this economy because um you know some of the, the the bigger companies you see advertising right now or the domestics only you know that are out there in the forefront i no i don't know what their you know book of business is but it seems like they're doing well they seem like they're they're encouraging you know investment in their own company or they seem to be they seem to get it yeah. without government help yeah i want to come back to um investment um but first of all in terms of in terms of what's going on in the supply chain um from a demand point of view are a lot of customers saying 
we'd like to get this board bid domestically or we definitely need to have this board made domestically are they are buyers changing their their behavior a little bit or is is that really more con, more a consumer sentiment than a than a um, commercial sentiment i think it's more of a commercial than consumer sentiment um you know whom i deal with um there hasn't been uh, there you know there there hasn't been a a dictate from my customers in fact i'm dealing with a with a government agency in fact when i deal with different companies i send out an annual you know a signature saying hey look i'm offshore do not send me anything itar you know i make mm. it very clear and one of them, was a, uh, I got in touch with an EMS company, and it was a uh, a government entity. And because I saw the email address .gov, and I'm like, oh, hold on, you know. Yep. Oh, no, no, Greg, we're okay with that. And I go, why is that? Um, we're having a problem finding someone to build this board, uh, you know. In and I US. said, how many pieces? Well, Greg would be about 1,000 pieces plus a year. And uh, we'd like to get someone to mess with. We can't get anyone to, to quote this 18-layer board. And to deliver it inside of three months. And I was like, really? And I said, okay. And, you know, so there it's the higher technology. Um, yeah. See, to me, that's where going back to being present for today, say, look, we're not going to compete against China. Okay. And I'm not going to tax our people. If I was president, I'm not going to tax our people on product they can't get here now. And I don't see why a fan or something that we need normally that people are just doing a day to day, we have to, for lack of a better word, subsidize a mm. domestic board house. And there's only 145 of them. Okay, if we double that, it's 300. So there's only 300 businesses. Uh, most of them are privately owned. So there's a lot of money going to a certain few amount of people. Yeah. And government money on a business that is making money. Okay, fine. Well, we could look at the politics about that. But hey, the direction I want to take the country is we want to build something that China can't build, okay? Yeah. All right, we want to go with that additive, the SAP, the additive, semi-additive, whatever those processes are, yeah. to something they can't. That's where we do it, the competition on and give those entries to that. Let Because one of the, uh, one of the, uh, one board house, domestic board house was complaining about two and four layer work. And I go, well, is that what you want to build? Yeah. Is that what we want to build two and four? Let let them build that over there. Yeah, let them do that. You know, yeah. and, and 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 that's fine. And let everyone have let everyone pay a decent price for a decent product. And yeah. but when we're talking about the higher technology, that's where we should go to. I don't mean to jump back, but I was just saying yeah. that's no, that's no, no. I yeah, no, I agree. I think that makes sense. And you want to you want to be where the most added value is and um where you where you can achieve the most and and you know where where stuff does make sense to remain domestically so just to go back to um innovation what i've been hearing a lot in the supply chain is whilst whilst things are easing there are still parts that are at risk you talked about um buyers being very busy managing the supply chain and not having time to do their um jobs perhaps as well as they could um, are you seeing much innovation in terms of supply chain visibility? People are talking to me about glass pipelines. Um, any clever ways of managing stock and inventory? Oh, yes. Um, that are cha changing things? Right. Well, you know, a lot of, we've got, a, okay, we have a capacity issue here in the U.S. So, yeah, we can get boards built here, but when can you get them here? You have a tariff. You have different issues. Um, there are some things where, yes, we're trying to get customers who are, I see more and more customers where I'm offering to them, hey, what on certain projects, how about we consign inventory? How about we have inventory instead of sitting in my warehouse? How about we keep it in your warehouse? And they're looking at me and I said, look, you know, even I've actually taken some customers to a, a point where you know, they want to save costs on their boards, but, you know, the PCB, uh, you know, freight is another department. These are major OEMs, freight's another department. So I said, you're not looking at your total cost of ownership here. Yeah. But sometimes look and say, Greg, we also want to save, a, 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 you know, we want to take out $180,000 this year on PCB spend. 
man, I'm not going to, well, I said, not the way you're doing it. Okay. Yeah. So sometimes they're shipping in this big product. They're, they're, they're saving money on freight because they think they're bringing this one big large shipment. But now the, when the freight bill comes in, well, when the freight comes in, well, you got to pay your 25% now at the border. Your UPS bill may be uh, UPS or DHL. Well, their terms are different than you know, your board house terms. Yep. So you've got maybe three or four different bills that you're paying on product that may you may be shipping out three month, over the next three months. I've had customers accepting product in November that they're not shipping that product out till February of the next year. Yeah. So I said, look, you've got to start looking, going from push system to a pull system. And a lot of board, a lot of customers are leery about giving that exposure as far mm. as this we have on our schedule. And I said, well, if you let me, if we play by the rules and we have it, then basically this is that we can see over three or four months time, we can see trends and and part of this, the AI and everything else that people look into, where we can mm. see trends say, hey, we need to have this on order. But customers say, well, we don't know what sales are going to be. And I said, do you think your sales are going to fall off by 90%? And they yeah. go, okay, well, this is part of the deal. So the, the individual piece price, everything landed may go up more, but the total cost of ownership for that whole year yeah. goes down. Yeah. And if it's done right, you can actually negotiate with the board house and say, look, yeah, I know I'm paying maybe a little bit more for this product, but I'm only paying for what I pull. My cash flow, which is another thing that customers don't see, we know that's an actual cost, it's but by doing awesome. a pull system and pulling product and getting your payables date as close as to your receivables date, yeah. you know, your cash flow, your inventory yeah. returns go up. And yeah. so there's an actual thing there. And, and I look at them and say, and when you're doing this way, if you can sign it and have them negotiated pretty well, then there's only one bill to pay according to what you guys negotiated. And that's the board, the freight, and the tariff. Yeah. Yeah, and in a single bill in the amount that you pulled off and put on the line that week. That week and the terms that you negotiated. Yeah, you know, so, yeah. So, yeah. You know, and I think that takes on, and it does, you know, in, in fact, with one customer, I'm doing that with an automotive customer, it's taking, even though we they love the idea and all that, well, we signed the deal back in February. It's now six months later. And it's like, they, they still... You know, it takes baby steps, so you got to show them that here it is. Yeah, and, here it is, and here's the better. It makes complete sense to me, especially at the moment when you look at the situation that most EMSs find themselves in, which is a huge influx of working cap in supporting a bill of materials that's one part short. Um, you know, the amount of work in progress on the floor, the amount of um, stock in, in inventory that, that maybe can't be used immediately because they're waiting for a part is huge. So if you can take take some of that cash flow out by 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 building out a pool system, I think that makes perfect sense. Oh, and if that pool system also gives them security and visibility in the supply chain, it's even better. Yeah, and in some cases, you know, I offer the customer, look, this is not a one size fits all. I mean, we could do this with certain part numbers, you know, because yeah. a lot of, you know, on EMS companies, they have their runners. Well, let's put that on your dinosaur, you know, and yeah. we could we do that. Um, in some cases, what I do, you know, you could be creative about, um, you know, freight. Um, you know, you have your standard freight, you have sea freight, you have air cargo, you have different mm. ways where you can say that if you allow us to have this time, okay, freight will actually go down, even yeah. on your existing stuff. And sometimes I have customers, they order the same thing every month. And it's like, you know, we could do this. Yeah. And that's when they worry about, well, what if sales change? Okay, well, here's the deal. I only have, there's the most you're responsible for is 60 days. You know, yeah. Yeah. come on, you're, is your sales going to fall off that much? Yeah. You know, you know even well, if they they're already having to order whatever they're having to order out to get those large consigned quantities. So, yeah. You know, so 60 days to me is, it should be a non-issue for them. You know, it's yeah. like, uh, you know, it's one of those things where, and some of that is you have to get in front of management rather than the buyer. The buyer is yeah. busy. The buyer is yeah. not strategically thinking about that. They don't have time to think about that. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, and again, that's the problem, isn't it, with dealing with the urgent over the important. And there's plenty of urgent stuff around there for them at the moment, especially on the um, especially on the chip side. Good yeah. stuff. Okay. Um, so where where do you see where do you see things going the rest of this year? You see a continuous improvement. You don't see too many um, bumps in the road as a as a impact of the economy. No, I. I, I... The only thing I would see is, you know, I, I don't know. I hear reports we are in recession and we're not in recession. Or what yeah. is a recession? Or recession is not bad. Or this is just part of the normal stuff. I don't know. Um, yeah. I, you know, I think there's going to be some. Um, as far as, you know, I don't see anything over the horizon as far as. Uh, as far as on the board level, as far as me delivering boards on time to a customer. Uh, what I will see is that, you know, will there be more products uh, or maybe some, uh, if there's recession, there's taxes, inflation, uh, will that affect, you know, some new development, some customers want to spend money or customers wanting to move? Uh, usually when I find that we're in this kind of uh, position, for me being a, a, a supplier down on, and a, a board is a component of being a component supplier, uh, this is where I see things are getting chopped a little bit more because yeah. you know, the, the EMS or the OEM is going to get squeezed on yeah. their costs. Yeah. You know, whether, it's, uh, whether it's corporate taxes, whether it's inflation, whether it's employees, whether it's all the other stuff that's out there that they have to do. And there is going to be more discussion about, okay, uh, let's shop this and see what happens. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. in my case, uh, well, that's opportunity for you, isn't it? Well, yeah, unfortunately, you know, and, you know, uh, yeah, unfortunately, I, I mean that sincerely because, um, their customers that you know they yes they may be paying more for that board okay but they have their supply chain everything's working well mm. yeah they're you know and they enjoy the relationship with they have with their um with their supply base and you know i i want that same loyalty too yeah but there's going to come a time where you know uh and it's happened for me every you know cyclical every five to eight years where you know I'll get a call from a buyer. Yeah, let's talk about this, Greg. You know, or yeah. where have you been? Or why haven't I heard you before? Like I've been here. You know, yeah. you ignored me, which is fine. You know, that's yeah, okay. yeah. No, that's 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 the way it goes. And stuff changes on the ramp. That's the that's 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 the nature of the of the cycle. Whether it's going up, going down, that's when people start to um, volumes going up or down. That's when people start to shop stuff around. So that you know, that's opportunities for some people it's disruption for others it's the uh, yeah. it's the nature of things and greg thanks so much for your time it's always a pleasure yeah. to chat always good to get a pulse on what's going on on the pcb market and uh, let's do it again soon thank you yes sounds good thank you